In this video, I'll be showing active ragdolls from my own experiments and games, alongside those from popular indie and AAA releases to help explain what they are and how they work. If you like this, please stick around after the how-to to the end so I can do some self-promotion there. Anyway, on with the video. Active Rag Dolls. What are they and how do they work? Late 2020, I started looking into Active Rag Dolls. I'd been curious about them for some time, but had no idea how they worked. So I went into Unity and got experimenting, and now I never want to stop. I love these things, and apparently I'm not alone. More and more games are popping up with Active Rag Dolls taking the forefront, from those with goofy characters humorously bumping into everything they see, to the more subtle examples you may have not even realised were using them. So, with some experience, and with more people wanting to know what these things are, should I use them, and how do they work, I thought I would make this video as an introduction into the what, why, and how of active ragdolls. This is your typical non-ragdoll video game character. It can move position on all axes, but only rotate in one. The character model you see is a purely visual avatar, using pre-made animations to relay a set range of information, while its actual physical shape is a single upright capsule that moves reliably with predictable outcomes. Fundamentally, its physical interactions are made to be simple and stable. Now this is the typical active ragdoll character. Unlike the character before, made of a single collider with an animated overlay, the ragdoll is made up of multiple physical parts, each connected together to form a kind of virtual puppet. Its physical parts highly line up with the visual model you see, which allows for its motions to be driven by the physics simulation instead of pre-made animations. This allows it to have infinite animated responses to new informations and scenarios with dynamic movements. Though having all these moving parts can lead to less predictable results, they appear more natural and are more physically responsive, able to interact with the game world with a higher degree of depth and flexibility. So, when to use them? While not good for games needing predictable motions or outcomes, they excel for games wanting more naturalistic or chaotic movements. By their nature, active rag dolls make characters with a much greater presence inside the game world. However, not all active rag dolls act the same or will be a fit for every game. Some are great, making highly responsive characters able to dynamically interact with props in the game world with great depth, but also struggle with performing more rigid animations or precise movements while others can perform specific motions and animations while still reacting to physical collisions and forces, they require a lot more work and setup before they can even begin to perform the simplest of actions. Active Rag Dolls come in all shapes and sizes. It's important to know what type is suitable to a game's needs. Let's look at some examples, both minimal and complex, to see how they have been used. Presumably only using one or two colliders for the torso, Fall Guys uses the simplest form of active rag doll to create effect, by essentially just freeing the axes of rotation of the traditional capsule shaped video game character, they make a hybrid that can be used in large numbers that chaotic nature makes its rough and tumble gameplay possible. From the simplest to the most complex, games like Grand Theft Auto V and Red Dead Redemption 2 use Euphoria, a ragdoll system developed by British company Natural Motion to allow for highly animated ragdolls. Capable of performing specific poses and animations while combining them with intelligent responses to physical collisions and influences, produces ragdoll characters with more stable and predictable outcomes, but without losing their physical responsiveness. Then there are the unconstrained physical characters of games like Gang Beasts and Humans Fall Flat. Fully physical ragdolls with movements and animations completely driven by scripted force impulses. These are probably the most reactive and well-known type of active ragdoll that are able to handle the widest range of physical interactions and situations. I've gone over the what and the why, now I'm going to cover the how. What does a ragdoll need to be active? The most important thing about designing an active ragdoll is how you're going to make it balance or stand up. The second is how you're going to drive the movement. There are an infinite amount of configurations and layouts for your rig and setup, each with their own set of behaviours and quirks, all of which heavily depend on these two things. I'm going to go over two different configurations that each use a distinctly different method of driving the joint movement and talk about each one's pros and cons. The first one I'm going to cover is force-driven ragdolls. 
Force-driven ragdolls move and stand by applying a mixture of persistent and intermittent external forces to different points of a ragdoll via script. Like a string puppet, the persistent forces keep the ragdoll's standing pose, while the impulses animate it. These types need a lot of care setting up their different sections weight, drag and gravity, requiring additional scripts to give you greater control over how these forces act for the best results. By their nature they are doll-like, lacking rigidity. They are best at big movements and collisions and not built for subtle poses or precise animation. Quick to set up, prototype and build, their parts can easily be reused and mixed to make new configurations of characters. They are easy to work with. The basic format for this kind of ragdoll is relatively simple. Again, think of a string puppet. You want a persistent upward force near the top of the character and a countering downward force somewhere below. By adjusting the strength of these countering forces, you can increase or decrease the character's ability to stay upright. Just make sure to check their full speed stays consistent. Something to note with this format is where you place the downward force, their strength, and whether or not you want a strong contact and friction with the ground. Having the downward forces on the feet gives the character strong grounding, but can also make it harder to navigate complex terrain and obstacles. To get around this, some will put the main downward force on the hips and adjust the script for the upward force to make a ragdoll that hovers a set distance over the ground, with the feet dangling below. By reducing the feet's contact with the ground, overcoming obstacles is easier, however the resulting character will have less friction and grounding. Regardless of how it's designed, once a ragdoll is able to stand, you have an active ragdoll. Animating it is simply a matter of applying different persistent and impulsive forces at different times via script. The second example I'm going to cover is torque-driven ragdolls. This will have to be a bit more brief than the force-driven example, as I haven't done much with this method. Still, even if it's a bit buggy, I think I have enough to be able to show its basic pros and cons. So what are torque-driven ragdolls? Torque-driven ragdolls move by rotating each part to a target rotation. This makes them considerably more stable than force-driven types, and less prone to extreme outputs. Though this method requires a lot more setup for each rig, and is less freeform than their force-driven counterparts, the end result greatly benefits from its unique nature. Ragdolls made this way have rigidity, giving them a sense of internal strength and tension, like creatures with muscle and bone rather than a limp doll or puppet. Done right, they are able to perform precise poses and motions, and are even able to have keyframed animations overlaid on top of their physical constraints. For my example, I have two rigs for my character, the active ragdoll, red, and the controller, green. To work, each part of the ragdoll attempts to copy the rotation of its matching part in the controller rig. The two rigs are configured the same way, so when the controller is moved to a standing or other pose, the ragdoll will copy it. As you can see, it will absorb the impact if dropped or hit. I can add weights, throw things at it, and see it struggle to keep its pose, and even adjust its rigidity by reducing its torque strength. To animate this, I simply pose the controller via keyframed animations or script, and the ragdoll will attempt to copy it. It may still need to use some additional force inputs to do things such as help lock the feet to the ground for larger body actions to help reduce slipping. With that, you hopefully have the basics to start your own experiments with active ragdolls. If you want to know more, I have documentation on my last game, Gaggle Brains, that uses crowds of humans and zombie ragdolls on my social media. And, at the time of this video, I currently have a demo of a fully physical, active ragdoll T-Rex for my game in production, Days with Dino, a small open world game where you'll be hunting and clashing with other active ragdoll characters as your T-Rex grows, so stay followed for that. If you liked this video and felt it was helpful, help me out by following the links in the description to the games I've released and I'm working on, and why not follow us here and on social media too. All those in-development ragdolls you saw in this video, they aren't there for nothing. I am going to be working my way through them in new games throughout the year, and will likely do some videos on a few of the fancier ones as I go. This has been Lorcan of Burn Bar Studio, and I hope this insight into my obsession with active ragdolls was helpful. See you around.